talk about a whirlwind of a career with the Mooseheads. You know, winning a Mem Cup, winning a President's Cup, yeah. moving on to becoming a head coach of that team in a, in a place where you grew up playing for St. Mary's here in Halifax. Yeah. I guess just talk about like even that first year in Halifax. How like what do you, talk about the emotion you were going through when you got the position? Yeah, no. Uh, obviously, when I played here at SMU, I went to a lot of Mooseheads games, and um, you know, like I told you earlier, um, you know, I love hockey and love watching it. So I, you know, I went to a ton of ton of their games, and um, yeah. So coming from St. John to here, and uh, you know, the Mooseheads are in a rebuilding here, and, and Dominic Ducharme and Steve Hartley were already hired and they are we'd already had that draft that we took drew Ann second overall and then fucali i think he may have been seventh or eighth i yeah. wasn't i wasn't hired by the team then i got hired like two weeks after and then obviously that's when nathan went to bay Camo first overall and i had coached uh, at the canada games against mckinnon and i remember the discussion of us possibly trading for nate right yeah. and uh so we had uh, you know obviously group texts and things like that to you know how much should we give up for mckinnon or whatever and i wasn't obviously part of those conversations but i in, in terms of what they were asking for or whatever but i remember um, us getting mckinnon and having those you know is, is he that good is he going to be this good is he you know yeah i was like this kid's the real deal i remember we had played under 14 and 15 against against uh nova scotia i was coaching new brunswick and i believe i i'm pretty sure nate had hat tricks in the gold at the, the, the challenge cup in moncton i believe yeah. nate had hat tricks both final gold medal games against we lost them and yeah so he's yeah so he's yeah and there he's, was games in halifax during that time too right didn't they play in the metro that, center uh that what? was uh yes that was that Pulaika. was the yeah yeah so yeah. that was uh that was uh, the Canada Games itself, but okay. bef- uh, leading up to that, there was the under fourteen, under fifteen. They have at the Challenge Cup in October, okay, Thanksgiving sorry. weekend. Yeah, okay. so so leading up to that, and then Nate obviously at the Canada Games was really good here too. Yeah, and he set yeah. a buzz in Halifax of wow, this guy might be playing for the Moose exactly, one day, and that's yeah. just when the buzz hit. Yeah, yeah, that was the buzz, and he uh, yeah, so obviously making that trade, it was it was huge for us. So yeah, coming into the Mooseheads, we were in a rebuild. Um, you know, you had Drew Fucali and McKinnon. Yeah. Uh, Brian Falkingham was a late, was a fifth round pick that year. So we had those four guys and that Drew didn't come right yeah, at the start, right? Yeah, why didn't he right? come? Uh, there was a lot of stuff. Um, you know, is, is he going to go to school, NCAA thing? And then oh, yeah. we had ended up trying to go up to obviously bring him to Halifax a couple times. I remember Dom. Dom was from Montreal. He would go see him practice and Cam would go up and Bobby would go up to see him. Um, you know, try and convince him to come. And then he ended up, he ended up coming at Christmas time. And obviously that's like, you know, it's like adding somebody at the trade deadline. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, that first year was, uh, it, it was, it was great. And, you know, I think we talked about this yesterday and we brought it up before is, is we were down three, nothing to go back and ended up winning in game seven. But you know, the third, you know, 2012, 2013, we win the Memorial cup. But I think I personally think us learning how to win against, Quebec that game you know we were down three games to nothing and then come back and win game seven in overtime you know we grew as a we grew as a as a as a group and you know we talk about great leaders like Critchlow was awesome for us we had Critchlow Randall and Cousner that year they they called themselves the CCR line but they were (laughs) they were awesome for us they taught our our, they taught our young guys how to win it was yeah that was uh real a real good uh, growth period for us. Like we, we we really grew as a group. Um, I remember that year, the year before, you guys ended up winning it all, and I agree with everything you're saying. I knew Critchlow a little bit because he played in Lewiston with yeah. a buddy of mine, Safaris, yeah. yeah. and yeah. I got to know him a little bit through there. And the leadership ability, we talked about it a second ago. Yeah. Just a pure leader, pure leader, that guy. Yeah, he's you know, character he, guy. He too. was a guy who's been a leader everywhere he's gone. Like you know, you look what he did at UMB. He had a great career at UMB, and now he's overseas playing, and he's he's you know he's. Yeah, he was one of those soldier guys. Like, yeah. and I always say this: as good as is, obviously, it was awesome to coach the Duran McKinnons and uh, you know Nico Heischer and those guys. The those other guys, you know, the supporting cast that those guys had were great people as well. Yeah. Like great teammates, great hockey players. You know, the Darcy Ashleys, Brent Andrews. Uh, you know, I can go on to Ryan Foghams, guys who went on to play AUS. You know, I was one of those guys. I, you know, I play with some great players, but, you know, those guys remind a lot about, you know, my, you know, remind me a lot about my playing career. Yeah. And those guys are so key for us. And, 
you know, those guys went away to Duran, Mc, Duran and McKenna went away to play World Juniors. And, you know, we never missed a beat that 2013 year. We were so deep and so good. And, and uh, yeah, so, th- you know, there's, there's, you know, you need superstar players, but the supporting cast and the, and the foot soldiers are just as important, you know, in terms of a winning ingredients for any team. Well, that was going to be my next question yeah. because, you know, when I played hockey, I played with, you know, really good players and there was you know, not trouble, but there was, you know, maybe a little jealousy issues. And you look at McKinnon and Drouin, stars of the CHL, and then you look at the supporting cast behind as the names that you just named. Was there any issues like that going into into that season, knowing that these two guys were the, the real deal going to the NHL? Or did everyone just mel and uh, mesh and gel together? Yeah, I think those, are, those, those other guys were so respectful and they knew how good those guys were. But, yeah. you know, you look at the... You know, Memorial Cup final game, obviously Nate's game was unbelievable, but, you know, Conrad Abelscheiser had five points. Fukali was, you know, obviously Fuchs is a world-class goalie, and he was, you know, I think he had 45, 46 saves. But we had, you know, like the Stephen McCulley's and, you know, Darcy Ashley and those guys were, you know, th- those guys were respectful of those guys, but they weren't scared to say anything to them either. Like I love if something that. needed to be said to, and that's the leadership that they brought that we needed to win. And, um, you know, and it, it was great. And, you know, I, you know, if you ask Nate and Joe, what, you know, those guys respected those guys and that they were a huge part of our, of our program for sure. Yeah. And as a coach, if someone makes a mistake on that bench, let's say you are in the Mem Cup and you see a mistake, is it at the point of the season where you let it go and you know that they're going to fix the mistake, or you would just say, "Hey, boys, you know, watch that chip along the boards. Like someone's coming for you there." Like, how, how do you how do you angle that as a coach? For an example, I remember watching Dobson this year at the Mem Cup, and he made a couple mistakes, and he went off to the bench for a second, and the coach didn't say anything to him because he's a guy who just kind of already knows he made a mistake. He's going to go back out there and fix it. As a coach going into that situation in the Mem Cup, uh, how do you approach a mistake? Yeah, I think at that point of the season, you know, you you just let the guys go and, you know, you 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 try and give them a little bit of guidance. But, to, you know, the, there's a reason why we were there too. Like we were, we were so deep and so good. And uh, like I remember the preparation for it, you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, over prep them or over coach the guys. They, you know, they were so zoomed, in, you know, zoned in and, and focused to, you know, to win. And, um, but uh, yeah, it, you know, we had, we, and again, we were, you know, we think we lost six games that year too. So don't, uh, <laughs> but we had a good team and we were deep, but it, it wasn't, uh, you know, we didn't over coach it a whole lot. We, um, you know, I, I think I said this to you yesterday. I think this one of the biggest things is we had beat, uh, we had lost to Saskatoon, and then we had beat uh, London, and we got some help the next night. So we had four days off. Our biggest challenge was to keep the guys busy and keep the guys occupied. And and uh, you know, I remember them going out to throw the baseball or a frisbee or something. We were more worried if they had sunscreen on the thing <laughs> so they didn't get heat stroke and you know, just little things like that. We had. You know, we took the guys, you know, mini putt batting cages and rock climbing on the on a wall. We're just like, oh, don't fall. And like, I was gonna just, say, like, yeah, that's just, not the... <laughs> you know, but it's you know, you, they got to be they got to be people and, and kids as well too. So we did a good job of handling that, I thought. And, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you, you know, you at, at that point when you get to the you know to those you know big moments, the guys are you know the guys are pretty focused and they you know they they see the prize at the end of the tunnel. So, yeah. you know, it was, it was, that was a great experience to win that for sure. It was a great experience to watch too. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Just sitting at home. I've never felt, you know, cause you, we don't have an NHL team here. So yeah. when you think of like the Leafs and Boston and Montreal, that fan base and they go win cups and every, the whole city comes together. I've never felt a moment where a whole city was just together yeah. for one day. It was a really cool yeah. feeling to be back home. Yeah. I don't think when you're like, I, when you, when you're so invested in it and so, involved in it you don't realize it until after or when it's all done when you win and you see the you know i think there was close to ten thousand people if not more downtown at the parade at the you know the the celebration after we won and i think you know you don't realize it until after the fact or flipping through your phone and you see those pictures you're like oh geez that was pretty cool right and then uh so yeah that you know it's yeah it was a real uh a real um cool experience yeah. and it, it was you know a, you know a lifetime memory for sure what's the biggest challenge after winning a mem cup the next year you almost have to come a little bit down to reality and reset what's the biggest challenge you know what like that when we that that following year we got uh, yeah, obviously with the draft with uh with uh, nate went first to to colorado and then joe got sent back that year and then we had a great draft in terms of uh european draft we had that's when we drafted ehlers and uh, timo meyer 
and um, so we had we had some some of those guys come back and uh, I think it was Darcy Darcy may have been a twenty year old so we had a good team so we had we we were really close we lost to Valdor I th- I'm pretty sure it was Valdor we lost to and Valdor ended up. Uh, winning the uh, winning the President's Cup the following year. Did they? Okay. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm 99% sure they did. So yeah. So we had a good team the following year. Yeah. And um, so we were close, and we you know we had a, a long series with uh, with uh, with Val Dor, and we were down, and we came back, and yeah. So it's you know that 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 year we could have we could have won too. Like it was that's yeah. how you know we we still had that depth we didn't you know we did, obviously we didn't have nate but we got joe back and that that really helped we had ehlers and yeah so we Meyer, yeah. We, were, we were a good uh we, we had a good team that second year do you look at a guy like timo meyer and ehlers and go okay you guys are great players but you're not nhl ready yet do you ever talk to maybe like agents or scouts or anything like that and they go okay look these two guys are prospects they're gonna go first second round here's what i need you to tell them is, is there anything like that in developing a guy because when you think of the mooseheads you think of guys who are being developed very well. I think the Mooseheads do a great job of that, of taking guys who are good hockey players and mm-hmm. turning them into pros. You do agree? Yeah. I, I I agree. Yeah, I think that you know one thing with Halifax is they do a great job with their European scouting, with Absolutely. all their scouting, and and um, you know uh, Nick Ehlers was a first round pick to you know, and and Timo was the following year. He was a first round pick. Timo. Timo was probably one of the most improved players from first year to second year. Absolutely, when he came, like absolutely, he, he was. You know, he's probably the first guy to say he was. You know, vanilla his first year, and then he comes. Um, it, it comes back to uh, in his second year, and then ends up being a first round pick to San Jose. So he, yeah, he he improved a ton. So we Halifax has done a great job of 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 getting European players and you know it's it's hats off to the organization because a lot of kids want to come right they they want to play for the Mooseheads yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, yeah they we've we, we did a good job of you know the development side of it too but you know those guys are good players they're yeah. hungry they want to they yeah. want to you know they want to get better and yeah. you know they come here to get to the NHL yeah. so that's that was uh, you know those those guys are fun to coach for sure. In your seven years there, what do you think the secret is of the development? I know it's getting guys here and making them comfortable, making sure they're good with their billets so they can focus on hockey. That's a big part of it. But is there anything else that maybe the listeners or the viewers don't see behind the scenes in the organization that really helps these players develop into pro hockey players? Yeah, I think it's you know like we've had some good coaches here as well too. Like you know Dom's in the NHL for a reason. He's you know he's a great coach, great developer, and we had Andre Tournier here. He was coach the year in in the OHL uh, this year and he had experience coaching the National Hockey League so you know is you know as a as an assistant coach I learned a ton from those guys yeah. too so uh, you know I know as a player you know the players learned a learned a bunch as well too so but the real the you know one thing I will give Halifax uh you know the Mooseheads a great you know uh, you know a great credit for is the resources they have world class strength coaches Alexi Pianozzi who's a Halifax guy was a, you know a strength coach for us for a few years and now he's in the NHL so um, you know Chris Pierce is there now uh, he uh, you know he's a great off ice strength coach for for the Moosehead so that in terms of of all the resources you know uh, you know great ownership group and Bobby lets you know or, or you know provides that for the players too so i think that's why a lot of kids want to come to halifax as yeah. well you know they have a you know the four pad over there that's a training you know the that's where they practice oh, facility unreal. and it's it's world-class facility there's there's pro teams who don't have that so it's um you know those are lots lot lots of the luxuries that you know that, that halifax provides too so i think there's you know great resources for players to to, to grow here 